All right, we are starting section 4.5. We did skip 4.4, .4, so you didn't miss anything. 4.5 has two special kinds of triangles that we're going to talk about. Isosceles, most of you know an isosceles triangle means you have two congruent sides. An equilateral, most of you know that means you have three congruent sides. But let's talk about these right now. There is a theorem, the isosceles triangle theorem, says if two sides of one triangle are congruent. So if this is my isosceles triangle, here's my two sides that are congruent. This theorem says if two sides are congruent, then the angles opposite those sides are congruent. That means I can come down here and go across, and that means these angles would have to be congruent, the ones across from them. If these sides are congruent, that means the angles across are congruent. That's if I'm given isosceles triangle, if I'm given congruent sides, I can say the angles across from them will be congruent. The converse is going to take the hypothesis and conclusion and reverse them. We talked about converse a couple chapters ago. See if you can take this theorem and write the converse of it before you continue the video. Okay, hopefully you wrote the converse as if two angles in one triangle are congruent, then the new conclusion, the sides opposite the angles are going to be congruent. So if I have two angles congruent, then that tells me I can take the sides across from them and they will have to be congruent. This theorem works forwards and backwards. All right, this proof right here is actually missing a step. So I drew a little line in here and put a 3.5 in so we could get one more statement in there. But notice the information that they give me, I'm going to get that information so I can use it. WXZ is isosceles. So here's my isosceles triangle. That tells me something. If it's isosceles, that tells me WX is congruent to XZ. And I go ahead and mark that. I know those sides are congruent. It also says XY bisects angle WXZ. So here's XY. You can keep it going if you want. It doesn't have to stop. But this side, this WXY is bisecting the angle. That tells me something. We've talked about this before. When you bisect an angle, you cut it in half. So I could put a little 1 and 2 here and say angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. You could say angle WXY is congruent to angle ZXY, but I like using numbers. I'm going to mark those with one arc. Oh, I'm missing my reasons. Why do we know these two sides are congruent? That's definition of isosceles triangle. That's what it means to be an isosceles triangle. You have two congruent sides. How do I know angle 1 is congruent to angle 2? That's definition of angle bisector. Notice how I'm taking the information that they're giving me. It's giving me a statement and that given information is my reason. Alright, I have a pair of sides congruent in both triangles. I have a pair of angles congruent in both triangles. Remember, we have five, well, so far four, but we're going to have a total of five reasons the triangles are going to be congruent. Side, side, side. See if you can name the four that we have so far. It's all the S's and A's. Side, side, side. Side, angle, side. Angle, side, angle. Angle, angle, side. Remember we said there's never an A S, S. That's not one of our options. In this triangle, I have a pair of sides. I have a pair of angles. I need another pair of angles or another pair of sides. Well, one thing I can say is they are congruent. The middle is congruent by reflexive. So I could say XY is congruent to XY by reflexive. And that should be enough to say the triangles are congruent by side, angle, side. Side, angle, side. I could add another statement here. Maybe I want to say WY is congruent to YZ. Why would I be able to say these two are congruent to each other? That's your C, P, C, T, C. My triangles are congruent, so now the corresponding parts will also have to be congruent. All right, one more proof. 
Again, I like to take the information and mark it in the picture of a big highlighter. MO is parallel to NP. To me, that information just jumps out when I put highlighter to it. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, so I've marked those congruent. All right, I have a... Um, notice this is a small triangle and this is a larger triangle, so there's no way I'm trying to get them congruent to each other. But it looks like I'm trying to say LN right here is going to be congruent to LP. I want to prove that those are equal. That's the prove that I'm trying to get to. All right, well, let's go with what we know. The reason they gave me parallel lines was so I could say something about them. Parallel lines. If these lines are parallel, hopefully you realize that means angle 1 has to be congruent to angle 3. And angle 2 is going to be congruent to angle 4. The reason parallel lines tell us what kind of angles are 2 and 4 or 1 and 3 together. Their corresponding angles are congruent. So if that's the case, if 1 is congruent to 3, I can mark it with 1 mark because they're congruent. 2 is congruent to 4, I can mark it with 1. So now it's looking like angle 3 must be congruent to angle 4. The reason is why. Well, if we said 1 was congruent to 3, 2 is congruent to 4, it looks like I could take out 1 and replace it with 2. Take out 2, replace it with 3. So I've got 3 is congruent to 4. This is an example of transitive. Four is congruent to two, two is congruent to one, one is congruent to three, so I'm getting from four to two to one to three. So four is congruent to three. If three and four are congruent to each other, if that's enough to say these two sides must be congruent, the question is, is that the isosceles triangle theorem or is it the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem? Remember up here I said, if you know the sides, then it's the isosceles triangle theorem to get the angles congruent. The converse is if you have congruent angles and then you're trying to say the sides must be congruent. So down here, I have congruent angles. Angle three and angle four are congruent. Therefore, the sides across from them must be congruent. So that's the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem. Okay, some of you are doing awesome with these proofs. Some of you are getting them slowly. Some of you are struggling with them. It's okay. We're teaching you a thought process on how to make statements, give reasons, give yourself, give your brain a chance to develop this. All right, isosceles and equilateral proofs. I'm not sure what happened here. I may have actually given you copied the side that had all the answers to it. So we're not going to go through these two proofs because you can read through them and I feel like I've been giving you a lot of proofs this go around. So we're just going to focus here on these top two and then you can look at these proofs later on your own to follow them through, those of you that are super proof excited. But let's just look at these two corollaries. Corollaries are statements we can use in proofs. And corollaries come from other statements or theorems that we know. A triangle is equilateral if and only if it is equilangular. If and only if is a way to say that this goes forwards and it goes backwards. So if a triangle is equilateral, it has to be equilangular. If a triangle is equilangular, it has to be equilateral. Equilateral, remember lateral is a word for sides, equal, think of that as equal. So if a triangle is equilateral, it has equal sides. Well, that is going to make, if we have an equilateral triangle, that means we're going to have an equal angular triangle. If you think about it, I could pretend that this is an isosceles triangle. Well, if these two sides are congruent, that means these angles have to be congruent. If I cover this side up, if these two angles sides are congruent, that means the angles across from them have to be congruent. If these two sides are congruent, that means the angles across from them are congruent. Well, by round robin, I've just figured out all the angles are congruent. 
So that's equal angular, equal, equal angles for angular and equilateral. They go together. And that corollary comes from our isosceles triangle theorem about if two sides are congruent, then the angles across from them are congruent. All right, one more corollary then. Each angle of an equilateral triangle measures 60. So if this is equilateral, if all the sides are equal, we already set up here, if it's equilateral, it's equilangular. So if it's equilangular, all the angles have to be equal. If all the angles in here have a sum of 180 degrees and they have to be equal, Take 180 divided by 3, that means each one has to be 60. And that should just be something that makes sense. All right. Go ahead and read through these proofs. Notice we're getting triangles congruent. It's one of our five reasons. Right after we have angles congruent, that's our CPCTC. But I'm not going to take you through that. And this is a rather short assignment. I'd like you to practice number one. Number four and number eight, there's no back to this. And if you notice, there's really no proofs. We're just trying to have you guys practice the ideas of what's happening. We'll probably have an activity to go with this because it is a short homework day.